first thing we got to do is, of course, set up our server, right? So we've got our routes, you know, you want to make requests, things like that. And then after you've got your server set up, you would probably move on to your database. So, you know, you got to write your schemas or your models and get all of that set up. And then uh, let's say you want to have things update in real time. So you'll need some kind of real-time component like WebSockets or maybe you want to do long polling. Um, and then after that, you can finally get around to doing some front-end work and making it look nice. You'll have your Angular, you have HTML, CSS, and, and then finally maybe we'll get around to doing some authentication. Who knows? Maybe we don't, we don't want our users <laughs> to be able to log in and out. Um, but this is, you know, this is a lengthy process. Um, so enter Firebase. Ooh. <laughs> um, so uh, Firebase is um, essentially a backend as a service um, that is also a real-time NoSQL database in the cloud that stores and syncs your data in real time. Um, so what does that mean for you when you're writing your web app? Essentially, your server, first off, right? It, it's going to be able to act as a server, so you can make requests to and from Firebase. So we can check that off. Um, it's also, like I mentioned, a NoSQL database. It stores all of your information in a JSON tree object. Um, and I mentioned this JSON tree object just because I think you know we've all kind of experienced setting up our models, getting our seeding our database, and then halfway through the project, <laughs> you need to make some changes, right? And then migrating all that data is. It's hard. It's not an easy task to do. Um, I think the JSON tree object is just slightly more flexible in the way that you add things to it and you uh, make child notes. Um, and then we've also got a real-time component in Firebase. Um, it handles all of your updates in real time. So once updates are like made to your database, all of your other connected apps uh, listen for these changes and also update automatically. And what do you know? It can even handle authentication, um, but not in a Chrome extension, as far as we know yet. <laughs> That's a shout out to my group, but um, we'll see about that. <laughs> Anyways, um, Firebase does support a lot of different ways for users to authenticate, and it has built-in functionality for third-party providers like Gmail, Twitter, GitHub, and Facebook. And it will also even manage your user sessions, so users can stay logged in after they refresh or they close their browser. And I'm sure you guys are thinking, this is a magical tool. Are you sure this is real? So why don't we do a little coding, and I can show you. All right. Let's see. So I have here, um, this is code for a really basic chat app. Um, it's pretty minimal, as you can see. Like there. Our HTML here is on the side, and we've got our app.js. And the only other file I have is like um, a style.css. Um, in, uh, in our app.js, you can actually see I am using Angular. And what do you know if you want to combine Firebase and Angular? There's a tool, and it's called Angular Fire. What a surprise. Um, essentially, you can declare Firebase um, like a module dependency, just like you do with UI Router. So when you uh, create that instance of your module, you just add it in here. And then in your controller, you have um, access to some services. And the one I'm using here is called $FirebaseArray. And this will create um, a synchronized array for you. Essentially, it'll, it's for things that you want to loop over, iterate through. Um, and so here, I'm downloading data from the Firebase reference into this array that I can then ng repeat over, which is great. Um, so these are all the messages, and then the username, we're just generating a random username, and my add message function here uh, creates a new record in the array. It's similar to array.push. Uh, um, and the HTML should look pretty standard as far as what we've done. Um, so this is it for the code. Let me show you guys the actual chat. Somewhere here. All right. Uh, so I've got one chat room here. I've got another chat room here. If I can drag and drop it. 
And this last window I'm bringing up is the Firebase console. So this is really great because it updates in real time, which I think is really cool. Um, but essentially, if I start to type a message here, you can see it instantly shows up in the other chat I've got, and it also shows up in the real-time database. So you can kind of just see instantly as you add data, how is it being added, what does it look like. Um, and you can also erase data. Um, hi there. So let's say I just want to clear everything. It's pretty simple. I think this is a double-edged sword. It's, you know, easy to delete, but that would also be kind of scary if you had a lot of info saved in there that you wanted to keep. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool, I think. <laughs> All right, so let me see. Um, just before I wrap up here, I just wanted to talk about some other additional features that Firebase offers. Um, essentially, since Google acquired Firebase in 2014, there's just like this one unified platform and it has a lot of the Google features um, packed in already. And one of them that comes in for free is Google Analytics, which is pretty cool. Um, you can just instantly start analyzing your data and looking at you know, what are your users responding to, what are they not. Um, and another feature they have is also site hosting and deployment. Um, so you can get a subdomain for your project on a firebaseapp.com domain. Um, and you can deploy files straight from your local directory um, on your computer to your hosting server. And it's a pretty simple setup. Um, another feature they have is storage. Um, so you can store and serve user-generated content. I think people mainly use it for like photos and videos. And I believe they said it stores up to petabytes of data, which is pretty hefty. And the last feature is um, remote config. So essentially, you can change the behavior or appearance of your app without uh, Necessary, necessarily requiring users to download an app update. Um, I thought this was pretty cool because they also allow for this thing called A-B testing. So let's say you want to roll out a change to some of your users, but not all of them. You can select a subgroup of people, roll that change out to them, see how they respond, if they like it. And if they don't, you can revert them back to the old version. And if they do, a, you know, push that change out to the rest of the people. But you can, you know, before you do anything like major, essentially just kind of test out the waters and see how people are feeling about it. Um, so all in all, I think um, Firebase is a pretty cool tool. Um, it's great if you want to just like get a prototype out quickly, if you want to focus on the front end and the user experience. Um, and it could probably be a really powerful tool for analytics in general. And not to mention, they can, it can also be used um, on both mobile um, for iOS and Android, as well as web apps. Uh, so I, here are some of the sources I used. Um, of course, the Firebase official docs. I watched a lot of great Google I.O. videos, which were really, really cool. <laughs> um, and they really inspire you to want to use this product. Um, and Scotch.io has also a couple tutorials on it. So I hope you guys enjoy this brief introduction to Firebase. And maybe you guys will try it out for future site projects. Thank you.